Hi there, my name is Elizabeth Plouffe and today is Wise Word Wednesdays. Well, I, I, I said the last time and I'm going to say it again. I need to change that because wise words come up on any day of the week. But what the focus is for wise words is I read a lot. I read a lot of business books and personal development and what have you. And not the touchy-feely women are from Mars and Venus and wherever kind of development, but strengths development, skills development, leadership development, that kind of thing. There's nothing wrong with the Mars and Venus aspect. Um, it's just not something that I am interested in right now. I tend to be very interest driven when it comes to my reading. So what I'm kicking off with today is a book that um, I got by happenstance. So a friend of mine, Monica Graves, and I'm actually wearing one of her, sorry, I'm just going to readjust here, wearing one of her jewelry pieces today, um, is also an avid reader. And spied this on her business shelf or her bookshelf sorry at her business glam jewels and so um went to have a look so this is the book here it's called oops which way am i going here it's the intuitive businesswoman um judy george and todd lynn i believe it is lion sorry um and the only thing actually up front about this book full disclosure is that it was a little more dated than i usually read so that's not to say that things that were written 30 years ago aren't still applicable i mean if you look at napoleon hill's think and grow rich that was done in the 20s and it's very applicable today this one however when was this done it's 1980s or 90s so the deficit of this is that it references statistics and activities that just aren't relevant for today the benefit of it is is that it takes you on a um, kind of an interesting skills evaluation that I wouldn't normally participate in. And I've, uh, I've just had the privilege of having my personality done, uh, Myers-Briggs, which was terrific. And Marilyn Ellis of Futures Found, um, who's a local entrepreneur who supports um, youth, teens and youth heading into post-secondary education, just to sort of evaluate their skills and interests and then help them make the decisions around their post-secondary choices. Uh, I'm working with her and the autism job club and she did it it was really cool so i happened to be an intj which is apparently one of the more rare types lucky me um but it really does bring to light personality strengths and weaknesses and and weaknesses not in a bad way but weaknesses that you need to be aware of and this book the intuitive businesswoman actually brought some stuff to light in a positive way as well so i'm not sure if you can even get your hands on it right now um, I was lucky enough to get it from Monica. Um, we can check and see if it's available online, but it's worth taking a look at. So this started with, the interesting thing I really like about this book is that she started her entrepreneurial journey the same way that I did, by getting fired. And people can view being fired, sorry I paused there, because people can have these really polarizing views on the advantages and disadvantages of being fired. And to me, the advantage of being fired is that you learn a lot about yourself, about what you'll accept and what you won't accept and, and where you need to go for your next direction. So did you get fired because it wasn't a good personality fit? Because for me, especially when I, when I take on a role with an organization, I'm the face of the organization. I really have to believe in what they're doing and providing in order to do the job effectively. And I know there are a lot of people that can just step into a role and it doesn't matter what the company does, they can, you know, make it happen. I'm, I happen to have odd personal drivers in that capacity. So if an organization is engaging in anything that I can't support, if it goes against my core values or what have you, it's never going to work out well. And with my last position, there were things that were happening that ended up violating my core values, which um, ended the position. And at the time, it was catastrophic. At the time, it had been such a hard year with this position that, um, and the way the position ended, it, it, it just, you know, not to take anything away from service people, but I, I would say I had a moderate form of PTSD because of what ended up happening. Four years later, best thing that ever happened to me. Even a year, even well, even six months after it happened, best thing that ever happened to me. So I'm going to share with you a little bit of what Judy George has to say here. And, um, and as we age, sometimes we need reading glasses. And this is the case for me. So the inner entrepreneur meets the cosmic boot. As it turned out, getting fired was the best career move I could have made. It was a cosmic boot, one of those seemingly tragic events that gets things moving and turns out to be a blessing in disguise. 
Once the unthinkable had happened, I discovered what was really mine. True, I didn't have a college degree, nor did I have great personal wealth, but I had vision, will, perseverance, ambition, and talent. In short, I was, and always had been, an entrepreneur. Looking back, I can hardly believe it took me so long to see the light. Why hadn't I noticed the chain of lemonade stands I'd started at age six, perfectly paralleled the expansion campaign I'd led at Scandinavian? I don't know what that is. With no training or backing, I had launched an interior design service, then a newspaper column, then a TV show. When I entered the workplace in 1975, after rearing four kids, hence the dated situation, I couldn't land the job I wanted, so I hired a plane to buzz the place. The plane's streamer read, hire Judy George, she'll make you money. They did, and I did. What's more entrepreneurial than that? This is, it, so I really enjoy that. I really, that's, that's a lot of chutzpah. And my entrepreneurship group, Ballsy, uh, we talk to people about different ways to differentiate your business and differentiate yourself and your services. Not sure that I would hire a plane, especially in these day and ages. But the benefit is that if you were to do something unexpected like that, because it's not done so much anymore, it would definitely generate interest. Not necessarily positive, who knows? but it would work. So what she's done based on, uh, back to the book here, what she's done based on a variety of systems that she um, investigated was she's created four personality traits that, see, and this is where I try and fix my hair and then I forget, where you end up in four categories. And like the Myers-Briggs, you can have a little bit of overlap between the two, but for the most part, you land squarely in one, um, one thing. And as part of personal development, I always tend to do these tests over again every few years because lifestyle and experience being what they are, they will influence what your answers are and where you might be. So I landed on um, adventurer, which I didn't expect. Um, and there also comes into play this inability to have a true perception of yourself. You might think you do, but I, I think for the most part, we all have... Um, you know, shades of gray that we, we see or don't see in ourselves. And taking the time to do these kind of personal development activities, read the books, do the whatever. I've done Strength Finders. I've done Do What You Are. I've done the Myers-Briggs. I've done a few different things. It really gives you an indication of what you should and shouldn't be doing. Because sometimes you try and, and fight against type and personality, and it's just not a good idea. Um, I was a college instructor for two years. Honestly, this ties in. Uh, I taught the medical office administration program for a local specialized college, and I loved being an instructor, loved it. I miss it a lot. But I had a student who identified up front that she had a learning disability. And I, my son has a learning disability, my husband does, so in no way does that make me an expert, but it makes me more familiar than somebody who does not. And I'm always open to the challenge of trying to teach people in different ways that meet their needs. But it turned out this person didn't just have a learning disability. She actually was intellectually compromised in that her IQ was well below what it would take to succeed in this medical office admin program. And the reason that was an issue is that we were doing anatomy, physiology, pharmacology, accounting, office management, computers. We were condensing a two-year program into essentially eight to nine months. So you definitely needed to be on the ball and have as many IQ points as possible in order to succeed with this program. And this girl, unfortunately, it became apparent really quickly that she wasn't going to succeed. And I ended up personally counseling her to leave the program. But I did ask her, I'm like, okay, so knowing that you have strengths in these other areas and, and ways that you could really succeed, why did you choose this? Knowing that the outcome for success was marginal at best. And she said, because I wanted to prove that I could which is awesome and admirable, and which is what I said to her. But she set herself up for financial and personal failure because these programs were not cheap, and the chances of her succeeding and being able to repay the debt were minimal. And so I said, it's fantastic, but you, you have to work with your strengths, and, and you have strengths that other people don't have, and yada, yada, yada. And she ended up crying. And I thought, oh, shoot, you know, I tried to be nice about it and what have you. And she said, no, no teacher has ever taken the time with me that you have, which to this day gives me goosebumps and, and makes me frightened for our education system. So regardless, 
her fighting against type while admirable um, can prove to be a deficit and can prove to be damaging because you end up in situations where you're just not going to succeed. So taking the time to do these assessments, taking the time to understand your personality strengths, I think hugely impacts your ability to be successful. So what she's broken them down into is the visionary, the artisan, the idealist, and the adventurer. And I'm just going to give you a little quick overview if, in, if you're interested in, in moving forward. And there's tons of other programs that incorporate these types of profiles that are available now and are you know, present in 2017. So the visionary is identified as determined, big print, but I'm going to need these in a second, so hang on. Determined, ambitious, cultured, courageous, refined, competitive, driven, independent, and private. So I'll read you a little quick thing here. The word visionary might suggest a person who is ahead of her time. In the context of the intuitive system, however, it's more accurate to say the visionaries have a strong ability to focus on a goal and make it happen, sometimes against all odds. Unlike the artisan who thrives in family-like units or the adventurer who often runs as a leader of the pack, the visionary stands alone in a role that can only be described as queenly. She is an empire builder who creates her own culture. She sets high goals for herself and the people around her, and she usually has no trouble occupying positions of authority. Visionaries can be very effective leaders because they focus on a goal, they're not bogged down by details. Getting the job done is of supreme importance. The visionary has places to go and will not be impeded by the ambivalence or faint-heartedness of others. Visionary businesswomen tend to follow the shortest path to financial success and are very good at creating demand and building a buzz around their businesses. They excel at marketing and sales. Yet visionaries in their quest for achievement never neglect what is for them an essential element of success, style. To the visionary, it is no good moving mountains unless it's done with flair. And since she is likely to be in a business that reflects her personal aesthetics, visionaries are often found in glamorous industries. That's why it's not me. She's less concerned about how things get done than about how they look when they're done. So there's, there's benefits and deficits, obviously, um, with being a visionary. I cheated a little bit with this book. And once I had done the quiz, I kind of jumped to me. <laughs> um, so how to spot a visionary? Presence, makeup, great grooming, great handbag and briefcase and shoes, pulled together, writes with a good pen, likes accessories. Uh, real jewelry, power suits, reading materials. I don't know, that's really weird. Um, you might be a visionary if your company logo is based on your signature, you're a lousy typist, you despise fluorescent lighting because that makes you look bad. You'd rather be unemployed than work in a cubicle. You fuss over your outfit almost as much as your presentation when preparing for a meeting. So very superficial sounding, um, which is kind of odd, which is probably the other reason that I don't fit the visionary profile is because I'm very WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. So it then goes through the, the profile for each person, advice, shortcomings, personality traits to watch for, and how to engage with other personality types. Um, as much as getting along with them as, as them being able to get along with you. So there's, there's a huge value in that to me. The artisan is modest, giving, personal, flexible, physical, cautious, socially aware. Artisans are not necessarily craftspeople in the strict sense of the word, but if one can divine artisan as a person who can make something special out of nothing special, then the name is entirely apt. An artisan can grow almost anything, including kitchen table startups, community organizations, and mighty corporations. Most artisans are blessed with an ability to draw people around themselves and create a working unit that looks a lot like a family. Artisans are giving of themselves and like to share whenever they can, including power and profits. They are motivated by doing good while doing well. Um, so basically they're like a visionary, but just apparently not as bitchy. Um, so I shouldn't say bitchy, that's not very nice, but very conscious of appearance. You may be an artisan, oh, these are some odd things. Your office is a converted carriage house. You'd rather be a nurse than a medical researcher. Every day is dressed down Friday. You often bring your lunch to work. You cry easily and wish you didn't. You're better off in the audience than you are on stage. That's so not me. You love the idea of being apprentice. You prefer to take a vote than make an autonomous decision. You have an office cat. That's a bit odd. So anyway, the artisan personality. And then she, it's really cool. She does go on to give, um, well-known examples of each profile. So like Laura Ashley is, is a, considered an artisan, Margaret Sanger. 
who uh, petitioned for reproductive rights and birth control. It talks about industries and what have you. So that's very cool. So if you identify with one of these personalities and you're looking to make a career change, then a resource like this might be a good way to start finding um, a new path. So the idealist is logical, methodical, farsighted, organized, analytical, and efficient. Idealists are the scientists of the business world. They do not answer to passion, ego, or impulse. Rather, they let numbers, facts, and logic take the lead and approach challenges with a cool detachment that is the envy of more mercurial types. Idealists build great careers and great companies on solid foundations of research and planning. Archetypal idealists like structure. They are comfortable with blueprints, schematics, outlines, and business plans. Give them a spreadsheet and a P&L statement, profit and loss, a set of statistics. A clean world of numbers is one of the idealists' natural habitats. So very interesting, very fact-based, very fact-focused. Um, another section of this is the intuitive scorecard that she applies to different personalities. Um, so I don't know who Margaret... No. Oh, she's a reverend. That's probably why I don't know. The Reverend Margaret Bullet Jonas. I don't know who that is. Um, Joanna Lau. Don't know who that is either. Shelley Lazarus. There's a, anyway, there's profiles in there. And then we get to the adventurer, which apparently is me. Um, flamboyant, unpredictable, unconventional, free-spirited, and dynamic. Not completely sure about that part, but when you read the rest of it, it kind of fits. Back in the 1960s, before I was born, a study was done that determined that entrepreneurs and juvenile delinquents had nearly identical personality traits. And that's kind of true because I got in way more trouble than my brother. Both groups proved to have little respect for authority, very true, and showed a willingness to take enormous risks in spite of the possibility of bad consequences. They tested as self-starters who did things on their own time, rebelled against outside structure and discipline, and believed that rules and regulations were for other people. It's so true for me. <laughs> More than anything, the study suggested that each group had an intense inner voice that needed to be heard above the harmonious drone of the crowd. In the case of juvenile delinquents, the voice was expressed in destructive ways. In the case of entrepreneurs, it was made into something positive, creative, and constructive. Adventurers are born entrepreneurs. Whether or not they start their own businesses, they want to take their impulses and run with them. Like juvenile delinquents, adventurers are not interested in methodical, sensible ways of getting ahead. They want to think big to leapfrog over conventional, conservative teachings and hit the jackpot. And they want plenty of attention along the way. That's actually not true for me. When successful, adventurers are at the rock and roll stars of the business world. Um, which, woo! I mean, hands up. I'd love to be a rock and roll star of the business world. The biggest thing for me is in corporate positions, so here's a personal share. Whenever I have worked for another organization on a permanent basis, on a long-term basis, I tend to get very frustrated by inefficient process and illogical decisions and people getting ahead who are not actually doing the job. That, I have a very strong sense of fair is fair and um, the sense of right, I guess. And if somebody is not towing the line and still succeeding, I take huge umbrage with that. And if a process is ridiculous, um, I will find ways to work around it, which is not always, always to the benefit of the company, but not necessarily to the benefit of the person who's next going to step into my shoes and has to follow the process which exists versus how I MacGyvered it. So that's always been an issue for me. Reading this thing, here's the biggest thing I wanna share with you. Reading this book and learning about the adventurer's mind and the adventurer's way of doing things has just given me a little bit of peace of mind that I'm not alone in how I view the world, that my personality is a, as much a benefit as it can be a hindrance sometimes, and that being able to identify with a community of people who are like-minded, regardless if I know anybody else who's done this quiz or what have you, it just gave me a sense of... Um, belonging almost, that I, I didn't have too much during school. I was always the outlier. I was always the one not following the trends. Not that I bucked them. I certainly wasn't any kind of, you know, goth or mod or I blended. But mentally, I always found it really challenging to um, identify with any peer group. I found it really challenging all through public school and high school to understand the other way people were thinking because they always followed the crowd. They always wore what everybody else wore. They always did what everybody else did. 
where somebody got into a queen bee position and told them what to do. They listened. And at no point did they just kind of stand back and go, you know what? You're a freaking idiot. Like you go do your thing and I'll go do mine. And because I was the minority in that thinking, and because I, I tended to sort of look like everybody else, I tended to get in a lot of trouble. Um, and with teachers, I did a, um, what did I have to do? I had to do a, um, not a book report, but a presentation for like grade 11 or 12 English. And I read the Thornbirds. And my take on that, uh, the stance I chose to discuss was, was the problem of sex in the Catholic Church <laughs> and touched on a little bit of pedophilia and what have you. So when I chose to, and I, I went to a, a public school and a Catholic school, so I wasn't going to burn in hell or anything, but when I chose that topic and I watched the teacher's face as I presented, you can tell that this wasn't what she had been expecting, <laughs> but it's what I took out of the book. Um, to the point where she actually wrote in my yearbook, um, I will never forget your presentation um, on the Thornbirds and sex in the Catholic Church. So having that kind of mindset definitely is, is terrific for an entrepreneur, being able to think out of the box and being able to um, embrace different ideologies and, and work with different groups. Now, I've found a place in society that I can use my skills and my brain the way it was meant to be used versus fighting against my type and trying to fit into jobs and roles that didn't allow me to um, behave in the way I need to behave. And, and it's a positive thing. I'm not saying that I have to be a rebel and, and what have you, but when you're fighting against type for so many years and you keep running up against these walls, it can be really detrimental to your self-esteem because you're constantly getting in trouble and you're constantly being asked why you can't follow the rules and, and you don't see it that way. I never saw it as not following the rules. I never saw it as and not being capable. I just saw there was a better way or a different way or a more efficient way. And um, just unfortunately wasn't too shy about going ahead and doing that. So my lesson here is Take some time to learn about yourself, whatever format you want to take. There's tons of stuff online. Try to find things that are reputable. I'm loving Dale Carnegie right now, um, how to win friends and influence people and some of the other work I've had from him. And just make sure it's not some fly by night shaman shaking a stick at you because you need structure. You need these to be sound principles to make decisions by, especially if you're looking at changing your business or your career. And, you know, Judy George, again, haven't looked her up, don't know if she's what she's doing or what have you, but I really enjoyed this book. And, and more so, it just confirmed for me, so, well, you know, quick plug, it confirmed for me that taking the time to work with these kinds of books, taking the time to make it a part of your business, investing in yourself and self-discovery is definitely a worthwhile investment because you may either get confirmation that how you function is okay, which will free you up to do more, or you may identify some weaknesses that you need to work on that will in turn help your business even more. So, so that's my wise words for today. It's a combination of, you know, the intuitive businesswoman from Judy George and Todd Lyon, um, which again, helps you to categorize yourself as a visionary, an idealist, uh, an adventurer, and an artisan. And in an ironic twist, the adventurer is uh, upside down on the cover of this book, Story of My Life. Um, my mother always said I was born backwards, which I was. Take the time to invest, take the time to read. You know, if, if reading isn't your strong suit, then you know, even magazine articles, whatever. Um, check some stuff out online. Marie Forleo is awesome for helping you go through this kind of stuff. Um, the Tony Robbins, um, what do you wanna call it? Documentary, I Am Not Your Guru was a really interesting examination of um, self-study and, and the process that you can go through and the, the breakthroughs that you can have. Ton of stuff out there. Just take the time. It's worth the investment. You're worth the investment more so. And learning about yourself can provide so many awesome situations and opportunities that you probably aren't expecting. So I'm just going to make sure that I've got the right button here. So those are my wise words for today. I hope you'll take a chance to investigate some stuff. I'm, I'm going to try and find some resources to share. So you can check me out on um, Twitter at MCBcoms. 
I'm on Instagram at ncvcoms. There's a website. There's all kinds of stuff. Website's undergoing some redesigns, so you might see some uh, some little inconsistencies right now, but that's going to get fixed. And, you know, as always, just know you have the guts and glory to create your own story, which is part of my Entrepreneurial Entrails podcast. And um, it'd be cool. I love to see your comments. If, uh, if you've taken this advice and start to do some investigation or you already have and you have a resource to recommend, put it up. I'd like to see it. So have a great day. It's kind of um, overcast and icky here in Burlington today, but sunshine's coming. Have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.